in a previous video, I solved the one-dimensional infinite square well using the shooting method. And this is the code for that. And I'm going to show you that code. The basic idea is to do a numerical calculation to solve the differential equation. But in order to match that boundary condition at the end, I have to keep changing the, ener the starting energy value until it works, which is really kind of cool because you get quantized energy uh, from this numerical situation. A calculation. Let me show you. So this is actually on energy level, the second energy level here. Uh, and I'm adjusting the energy of the wave function until this wave function gets back to this boundary condition right here where it has to be equal to zero because in an infinite w square well, the wave function cannot exist past x equals a, which is over that other side. That's kind of a cool way to do it. Uh, but we have a problem. And the problem is that this is not a normalized wave function. So let's talk about normalized wave functions uh, and then we'll talk about numerical integrations because although this looks like sine and that is a solution sign, it's not. This is just numerical values. This is numerical data. So I can't just integrate to find the normalization. But let, let's get to normalization and then we'll come back and then I'll talk about integrals and then we'll come back here and we'll do it. Okay. So this is this is our wave function that we're talking about right here, and this is the infinite square well. So the potential goes up to infinity right here, it goes up to infinity right there, and the function can exist somewhere in between here. We have we have the probability density of the wave function can be found with psi star psi. So it's a complex conjugate of psi. And psi actually depends on, I want to be clear, it has this time and space component to it. In the original solution, the analytical solution, uh, we guessed, and I'll put a link to that video down below, uh, that we could separate this function into a time function and a space function. And then if we do that, we get this as our time function. So it does change with time. But when you go to do the complex conjugate, I have e to the minus i e t over h bar, and then e to the i e t over h bar. And when I multiply those together, I just get one. So the time doesn't doesn't do anything there. And I just left I'm left with uh, psi squared, assuming psi is uh, real, which that's a, it, there's no reason for it to not be real because our our differential equation for this didn't have any complex numbers in it. So when we normalize, we're saying that the probability, if you add up the probability density over all space, you have to find the particles somewhere. So the integral from negative x equals negative infinity to infinity of the probability density should be 1. We need to define it to be 1. And that gives us this probability density over here, where the function is 0, so that's 0, and the probability over here, the function is 0. So we're left with this part, just going from 0 to a, of psi squared dx. But again, we can't calculate that analytically because I don't have a function for that. I just have data points. I calculated data points. So let's, how do we find the, how do we integrate data points? And I'm going to have to square it, which I can do. You can square data points. That's not the problem. So imagine that I have this. Psi, star, psi. I'll put it like that. And this is x, and this is a. That's the, the x equals a. I, x equals a. I have a data point, data point, data point, data point. I'm just, I'm just picking stuff here. Not, not really that great. And you can imagine that it's you know, this curve, which I drew very poorly. How do we integrate that? If you remember, the integral is just going to be the, uh, the sum of the areas. Or really, I could say uh, 1, the probability, or let's just call it the, let's call it pt, the temporary probability. It's going to be the sum of psi i d delta x. Oh, this is star. Let's call it. Let's call it a. A is 
the sum over i psi i squared delta x. Instead of doing an actual integral where I let delta x go to 0, I'm going to let delta x not be 0. And in fact, this is my delta x. From there to there is delta x. And I want to find the area of that. So this is my psi i squared. That's psi 1. That's psi 2, actually. That's psi 1. This is psi 3 squared and so forth. If I can just assume that that part of the graph is a rectangle, I can find that little piece of area. And then I can do that for the next area. It's going to look like this. It's going to have the same dx. And it's going to have uh, psi 3 times delta x. And then I'm going to do the next one. I'm just going to the left. You could go to the left or the right. It doesn't really matter too much, and so forth. So if I just take the value times delta x and then add them all up, it would almost give me the area, but not quite, right? Because if I go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so that's i7 squared, uh, and I draw boxes over here, Like that. I have one, two, three, four, five, six boxes, and I have seven data points. So if I just do i dx and sum them up, it's not right. But if I have a hundred data points, I have one extra one, I can just let's just pretend like that doesn't happen. Not that's not it's not I'm not trying to encourage you to do bad things. I'm just telling you the way it is. So what I'm gonna do is just take each psi value, multiply it by delta x and the psi squared, and then add them all up, and that will be my area. And I want to set that to equal to 1. And if you recall from my previous uh, explanation, the one thing that I can change is the initial psi dot, the initial slope. And that's what I'm going to change. I want to change psi dot so that once I do reintegrate, I get an area of 1. OK, let's do this in Python. You know, it, it's going to help to do this as uh, a list, using a list. So I'm going to make a, I copied the code and I'm going to modify the code. Let's go ahead and put this as psi star, psi star psi, which is the probability density. Uh, and down here, I don't really care about the finding the energy value, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to plot this. I'm going to get rid of the rate statement there. And I'm going to not plot this. Not plot this. And then once I'm done, then I can just plot the whole thing. I'm going to plot the solution. But I, I do need to do one thing. And I need my, my psi values, my, my psi squared values, in a list of data points. I'm going to need that. So let's make up an empty list right here. Um, I'm going to make the empty list in here because I'm going to reset the list every time I go through the loop and so that I end up with the good list. Let's call it uh, PSIL for a, a, a list. And it's going to be an empty list. Nothing's in there. Whenever I calculate a new value right here, I'm going to add a value to my P list. I'm just using the X's. I mean the Y's. I don't care about the X's. So PSIL equals PSIL plus... Oh, this is going to be p psi. I, I want. I want to do. This is. I'm going to put two l, right? Because it's this. It's the squared value. I'm going to add psi times psi squared, and so that's going to add it to the list. And then if it's not the right energy, when I go back up to the top, I'm just going to delete it all and start it all over. So at the end, I will have the energy that I want, the psi star that I want. So let's plot that, and then we'll integrate it. So this is pretty easy to plot. Um, I guess I should add an x list too. Let's do that. Uh, xl equals empty list. And then I'll just add my x values here too. xl equals xl plus x. And there's more than one way to do this. There's always more than one way to do it. Do it the way that makes most sense to you. Now, I need to traverse that list. and and. I could just do 4 
Psi, Temp, and Psi list, and that would be really great, but I need to reference two lists of the same index. So I'm actually gonna do this. For I, that's a little low, I apologize. That's too high. For I in range length of Psi list, Psi two list. And this will go through each item in there and call it zero, one, two, three, four. And now I just want to plot it. F1 dot plot. My X value is going to be X list I. And my Y list value is going to be PSI 2L I. And that's it. It should plot the probability density. Let's see if it does. And it didn't. I made a mistake. Something bad happened. F1 data. I didn't take that out. F1 data. Where did that go? F right here. Get rid of that. Don't need that. I think that should be good. Yeah. So it went through, calculated the energy, and then plotted it. And that's what I want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate this. I'm going to integrate this and find the area. So let's do that. Um, I, I already I can do it right here while I plot it. A equals A equals zero. Do I have an A up here? Let's actually go up here and I'm gonna do a trick. So when I calculate my psi, I'm going to set here I have the the, the slope as uh, one. I'm gonna put that as A. And then here, I'm gonna say A is equal to one. So it never change it. And then down here, let's call this the uh, A, the, the, the PA for probability area. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm gonna go through and calculate each segment of the rectangle and add it to that. And then once I'm done, I'll have the total area. PA equals PA plus Psi I or 2L I, that's each element, and then I need to multiply that by DX, which I have DX, right? I could do this easily uh, and do D, the change in X, if they're not evenly spaced, but they're all evenly spaced, I'm just gonna D, DX, and it's wrong, and I'm a bad person for doing that, but I don't know, I just wanna do it. Now let's print that out, print uh, area equals, or probability, let's just say, because that's what it is, probability equals PA. Okay, now we're gonna run it. And I get a probability of 0 0.012. Let's just see what happens if I increase my value of A. Remember that 0, so it's 0 0.01. I'm gonna increase the value of A to uh, five. And let's run it again. So you could just do this manually. See, the, I'm, get, I'm going in the right direction. So I want to get that equal to one. You could just keep changing this until it is, uh, let's say 10. Let's just try it. There's nothing wrong with that. That's pretty close. So that's almost normalized. But it turns out another way to do this, and I don't remember why this works. If I switch that back to one, I calculate the area. It's this. And then I make my initial slope one divided by the square root of that and I run it one so now I normalize the function so that is normalized data that is my probability density uh, I'm pretty happy with that uh, and that's kind of cool so really the most important thing is how to do a numerical integral and I think that's very useful because we can actually integrate of course, if you have the analytical function anyway, you have sine squared. That's not really the tr most trivial thing to integrate, but it's not impossible either. Down below this code, down below my previous video on shooting method and my previous video before that on the analytical solution to the one-dimensional infinite square, well, yeah, there's going to be more of this stuff. We'll do probably uh, a half finite well next because that'll be fun.